Hey Zoom, hallelujah, what's going on everybody? Hey, bringing you a little late evening video. Man, the good Lord has pushed me out here. The Holy Spirit has moved me out here to Tent City, baby, and we're raising the roof for Jesus. Right? Praise the Lord, man. And uh, the day's winding down. Had a beautiful day with my wife. I hope wherever you are in this big, beautiful world, um, you had a great day as well. Um, today it's called, um, Out of the Jesus is Calling, When You Seek My Face. Um, you know, when we seek God's face, you know, in, uh, in those moments of hopelessness, we seek God's face, we, we see hope. When we, uh, we're in those moments of fear, oh, we seek God's face and we get courage. You see where I'm going with this, right? When you feel hated by this world, you seek God's face and you feel love. Um, by, by activating your faith in God, as soon as you go into prayer, you feel His presence and all the goodness flows from up above, guys. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is coming through me when I say that because God is love. God is hope. God is strength. God is everything good about this world. It's the only thing good in this world. This is why they're trying to get rid of our Bibles and Jesus' name on t-shirts is even offending people. It offends them because the truth... Um, the, um, the, just offends people who are living a lie for Lucifer. If you're not living for God in heaven through Jesus Christ, you're living for the devil. There's two teams, Team Jesus and Team Lucifer. Which team are you on? I'm on Team Jesus. I like winning. I want to be on the winning team. And Jesus, I got the baseball shirt on for the Baltimore Orioles. Jesus hit that game-winning home run, that walk-off home run at Calvary a couple thousand years ago when he died on the cross and resurrected from out of the tomb and resurrected and, and was alive again. They killed him and he rose from the dead, defeating death, which means we defeat death. And now through Jesus Christ, the King of King, Lord of Lords, when you're a part of him and you have him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, you are connected with God in heaven right now. But you have to activate the faith, you know, by simply, like, I have to activate my phone, hit the button, boom, it's on, right? You have to activate your faith by hitting that button of prayer and inviting God into that moment. He just doesn't come down and push you out of the way and go, oh, there's danger here. Oh, don't sin. Get that, you know, that drink out of your hand, that cigarette, that pornography book or that video. He don't do that. It's free will, me and you. But we can overcome things that overcame us. We can overcome fear. We can overcome depression. We can overcome hopelessness only when you seek his face. Praise the Lord, man. Listen, if it's dark in your house, what do you do? You turn the light switch on. Why? So you can see. God is that Jesus Christ is the spiritual light that we need to light. He is the light of the world. Um, we need him in the spiritual realm as I need the light in my cabin or the, the sun rising in the morning. Jesus Christ, as the sun is the physical light of the world, Jesus Christ is that spiritual light. And we need to seek God's face so we can see courage, strength, hope, love, forgiveness, all the fruit of the spirit, man. Like I touch my phone, I turn it on, I got access to the whole internet. When I pray, I got access to all God's power and His love and wisdom. You see where I'm going with this? Praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit having His way. Now, when you seek my face, it's coming out of the Jesus is calling, right? The Sarah Young devotional, guys. It's been a long day and um, I don't have any energy or focus, man. I had to like call on the Lord right now. You know, I had to seek His face for His focus, for His energy to get His message out. I'm picking up my cross and I don't just wear one around my neck. I got one up on my shoulder every day and I had to call on him because he moved me to do this. My flesh said, no, go lay in the house. You don't need to do nothing. I had to get up and get out here for the Lord because Jesus died for me. I have to live my best for him. And when God says move, you got to get this message out today at uh, what, 6 uh, 40 um, p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Thursday, June 8th. I need to launch this off the, the launching pad now for people to see it in the future at that perfect day and perfect time. It's amazing. That's how God gave it to me. The answer, why now? Why not tomorrow morning? Because it needs to be done now. This message, someone's going to need to hear tonight in God's perfect timing or another day or a year from now. It's But it needs to go out now. And here you go, guys. Okay. So uh, it says, when you seek my face, praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, give me focus. Hallelujah. All right, guys, here's Jesus calling. It says here, I'm going to kick it off with a uh, scripture first, okay? Coming out of the book of John, great apostle, Apostle John, man, a rock star, uh, just a fighter for the Lord, bringing truth to the world of lies, right? Praise God. John 15, verse 11 says, Jesus is speaking, by the way, it says, love and joy perfected is the title heading into these verses here because the t um, subject matter um matter changes even in a chapter it's not one chapter of this or that subject matters change throughout verses so from these verses actually nine through something but i'm going to give you just verse 11 out of this but it's titled love and joy perfected 
Jesus speaking red letters, hallelujah. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Um, when we're in the presence of God, we have joy. If you don't pray to God, there is no joy. There is no joy. Sadness, depression, anxiety, anger, whatever might come your way from not having joy, that will consume you. But I like praying to God. I like being in His presence and being consumed by His strength, number one, right? With a humble confidence, I walk the land here knowing that I'm protected under the blood of Christ and I nothing can come against me. No disease, no man, a giant, um, a lion's den that we're all in. Nothing can come against me as long as, in, in the, as long as I'm in the presence of the Lord. I stay in the presence of the Lord. And a lot of people say, Daryl, you talk about God too much. A lot of people say that. But I say to them, you don't talk about them enough. Their first answer is, re um, respond is, what are you, better than me? No, I'm happier, more joyful. You see where this is going, right? Stay in the presence of God if you want happiness. If not, then don't pray to him. And he, he is the only place in his presence can we find peace because he is the Prince of Peace. And we can only find peace in his presence, joy in his presence, and strength and wisdom. Praise the Lord. We've got a lot of birds chirping around here, man. This is uh, Birdland. Let me uh, turn around real quick. I see my shirt says Birdland, and we're definitely in Birdland here. <laughs> I'm an Oriole fan, a Raven fan, and I used to look past the baseball now and look at its God's creations, man. The Oriole bird, right? The Raven. Wow. The second bird that Noah sent off the ark, right? Wow. Pretty amazing, right? But anyway, the study note on this verse says here that joy, that your joy may be full is an expression particular particular to John. So we go to uh, John. Um, it sends me to uh, the uh, first book of John, back here towards the back here of the Bible. And what verse is it right here? First, uh, first John, uh, verse 4, and it says, uh, if I can find it here, help me, Holy Spirit, praise the Lord. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. They're, they're writing to us. All the apostles are writing to us because they had pure joy in the presence of Jesus when they walked the earth with him, literally walked the earth with Jesus next to them, right? He lives within us now. That was God in the flesh. God in the flesh. He, God lives in us now through the Holy Spirit. And and he says, man, just be, be joy. It says a Christian cannot know real joy except in proper relationship with God and others who are filled with the Holy Spirit of God, right? Holy Spirit filled, God filled people. Or people, you know, um, or God himself, basically, right? That's what it says here. Light refers to God's moral character. No darkness at all. God is holy, untouched by evil or sin. So he's untouched by evil or sin. Everything around us is evil. This is why we feel depleted, hopeless, angry, um, just, you know, not focused on good people, places, and things, but we're focused on nothing because we can't see nothing good in people, places, and things because we live in darkness, right? That's what it comes down to when you don't have God in your life and you're not in a relationship with Him. Um, if I hung out with Michael Jordan or Larry Bird, right, just checking the time up here, I'd be a great basketball player, right? Wouldn't be perfect, but I'd be darn good, better than what I am today because they teach me some tips and pointers and how to beat my opponent. Well, God's Word will give you tips and, and, and pointers on how to defeat your your um, your uh, competition today, which is Lucifer and the fallen angels that attack your mind. Praise the Lord, man. All right? Praise the Lord. Great scripture right there. So, again, we can only find peace and joy when we're talking to God. We can only find peace and joy when we're reading his word we can only find peace and joy when we call out for him as soon as my joy and peace slip away i don't let but a few seconds go by maybe a couple minutes i might get caught off guard right depending on what i'm doing that day um and how many people i minister to you know my spirit might be low kind of but i'm still battling back and i know if i'm drowning in the ocean i'll grab that life preserver so god is my life preserver he is our life preserver in this ocean of life and it gets rough here guys and there's a lot of sharks out here man trying to drag you under and kill you steal kill and destroy you right shark has no mercy neither does satan guys and we must stay in the presence of god man praise the lord all right guys we're going to move on and i'm going to say this last scripture it's uh first corinthians 13 12 if you want to go there while i start reading and we're going to get into this it says when you seek my face jesus is speaking right god almighty hallelujah lord god almighty when you seek my face, put aside thoughts of everything else. The worry, the anxiety, the fear, worrying about bills, the children, um, your husband, your boyfriend, your neighbors. Put all that aside. Take that right here. Look, lay it all down. Lord, clear my mind. Praise the Lord. 
Now it says here, I am above all, as well as in all. Your communion with me transcends both time and circumstances. Be prepared to be blessed bountifully by my presence, guys. You know how people get in the presence of a, a celebrity and they're like, Oh, wow, Marky Wahlberg! <laughs> right? Or Michael George, Larry Bird! They're all excited and they feel great. That's in the secular world, man. That's in the physical, right? Spiritually, you feel that way when you're with God. Be prepared to be blessed and bountifully by my presence. For I am God of your, of unlimited abundance, guys. He has what you need when you need it. And, a, and, a, and an abundant supply of love, hope, peace. It never runs out. His love, right? Praise God. Open wide your heart and mind to receive more and more of me. When your joy in me meets my joy in you, there are fireworks of heavenly ecstasy, guys. Ecstasy! When you're in the presence of God, man, it's pure excitement, pure joy that nobody can take away or deny that smile on your face when you're in the presence of God and have a true friendship with God, man. Praise the Lord. Um, now it says here, there are fireworks of heavenly ecstasy. There is an eternal life here now and a tiny foretaste of what awaits you in the life to come. God is saying right here, guys, that we get this excited through the Holy Spirit, and we can't see God. He's a spirit. They only saw Jesus, the God in the flesh. They got to see him. How excited were the apostles, right? But one day, this excitement here will be multiplied a million times and be pure ecstasy when we get to see Jesus in person and finally see what he looks like. All those little paintings of uh, people's family members that, you know, they had uh, posed for Jesus, you know, as Jesus and what they think he might look like. We're going to see what he looks like and it's going to be one amazing day, guys, of excitement. I cannot wait to see what Jesus looks like and to be in his very presence. I can feel him. I can't see him though, but I feel him. I feel the love. I feel the encouragement. I feel forgiveness for others. I feel joy. I feel peace. I feel hope and strength. Praise God, but we'll get to see him one day. 1 Corinthians now, 13, 12, it goes like this. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And right there means, mirror probably means here the Word of God. So we got the Word of God, and we got pure excitement in being in the presence of God. How can we be in the presence of God if He's not here physically? Spiritually, He's here. Like the oxygen I just breathed in. We can't see oxygen, but he's, he's it's here. We can't see God, but it's here. We feel the oxygen hitting our brain and our lungs saying, Hey, it's okay, we're alive, right? Praise God. But soon... It's dim, right? Because we can't see God. But it says here, which can give us only a partial understanding of God. His word and feeling his presence when we pray. Because joy comes out of nowhere. Peace comes out of nowhere when it's in a chaotic, fearful situation. I got courage. I got peace. I got joy. Praise the Lord. This will change when we see him face to face, guys. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Now you see only a poor reflection as in a mirror. It's like we can't, you know, it's a poor reflection in a mirror. You know, one of those cheap mirrors, right? But soon we will see it clearly. Um, you know, one of those metal ones where you look in it and it looks like a wavy, like a, one of those uh, mirrors at the uh, circus where it makes it distorted. Soon it won't be distorted, even though we feel everything good. Because good things only flow when you're talking to God, praying to Him. We talk to Him when we read His Word. He's talking to us because His Word is alive because He's alive. Every word of this Bible is inspired by people who were inspired by God to write this to us. But soon we will see Him face to face. How cool would that be? Think about that. Wow. Woo! Praise God, guys. I love you very much. Peace be with you. If the good Lord takes me home before you, I will leave the lights on like Motel 6. <laughs> God bless you guys. Have a great night, man. And remember, guys, when it gets dark, seek God's face. The lights will come on. You will see hope. You will see strength. You will see peace and joy. That's the only way that you can feel any of these beautiful things because they only flow from our beautiful God who lives in heaven, the one true God. And only through Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, we got the Holy Spirit, a connection to God. But you and me, we have to activate our faith. And it's by calling on God. He's listening. Give him a holler. Seek his face right now. Get that joy. Get that smile going. Hallelujah. See you next time. Woo!